Russia's war on Ukraine has shaken global security, and it's forced some European nations to reconsider their neutrality. Sweden and Finland now desperately want to join NATO, breaking with decades of non-alignment. Every NATO ally but two has approved Sweden and Finland's membership. The two holdouts, Turkey and Hungary. Hungary says it will greenlight their membership bids this year, but Turkey appears far from a yes at this point. My next guest is urging Turkey to approve Finland and Sweden's ascension to NATO. Ermes Reinslau is Estonia's foreign minister. I spoke with him yesterday. Minister, thank you so much for speaking with us today. I'd like to start by asking you about a conversation you had yesterday. You met with Turkey's foreign minister and urged him to allow Sweden and Finland to join the NATO alliance. Are you hopeful that that meeting moved the needle at all? Well, it's important uh, between the allies give a clear uh, sign what is our uh, view on the events. And my message was steadfast that uh, we can't let uh, Sweden, Finland to remain uh, in a gray zone. And in the sake of uh, uh, trustworthy of uh, alliance, in the sake of our regional security, we call Turkey uh, to uh, to smoothly uh, ratify the protocols. And uh, well, uh, the, my colleague answered me with his, uh, their uh, position. And to be honest, I believe that uh, uh, this issue will, in a high uh, political level, remain uh, frozen uh, until um, the Turkish elections. But uh, what is very important, I stated that uh, uh, Sweden will continue in implementation of this memorandum, what uh, has been trilaterally uh, signed. And I think this is very positive uh, context. So uh, at one point, you, you believe that this issue, in terms of the conversations you had uh, with uh, Turkey's foreign minister, that, that it is frozen from their perspective until the next elections. Is that is that my understanding? Well, I think that uh, the thing seemed to be now that... Uh, uh, the, the case is put on hold. Uh, what doesn't mean that uh, the uh, countries involved are not uh, making practical preparations. But, uh, of course, Estonia would welcome uh, as quickly as possible uh, to, uh, uh, to, to become uh, Sweden, Finland uh, full members. But the reality is that the tensions are truly high. And uh, my message was that uh, we should not let uh, any kind of uh, provocateurs uh, uh, to in harm our joint course. Um, from Estonia's perspective, you, you talked about how you would welcome the, the joining of, of these two countries um, it, to the NATO alliance. Why is it such an important thing, and why do you want to see it happen quickly? If we look at the map, so Baltic countries basically, uh, well, uh, neighboring in one side Russia, other side a Baltic Sea, are like a, a narrow a cape of NATO countries. And uh, the security perspective for us, regional security perspective, uh, uh, will uh, significantly change when uh, Finland, with a uh, solid uh, army, also Sweden, will join. And it makes, in a way, also like a Baltic Sea, a NATO inner sea. Uh, um, fresh off securing commitments about tanks, several Western partners um, are, are now considering a new request from Ukraine, and that has to do with fighter jets. But the U.S., the U.K., and Germany are all saying no. Do you think that Western partners, Western allies, should uh, at least further consider sending fighter jets to Ukraine? What do you think about that ask from Ukraine? Surely, because we have to ask from ourselves, what is our strategic intent? Why we are supporting... Uh, by arms deliveries uh, Ukraine, because we want uh, not to see uh, um, Ukraine losing. And that is case I would like to uh, uh, call for a new paradigm, not uh, to uh, let uh, Ukraine losing, but uh, let Ukraine winning. And if that put a uh, strategic target, it will change also our approach towards uh, uh, deliveries of conventional weaponry. Yes, this is, has been uh, last year. It was a uh, uh, ca cannons, whether to give or not, would it be too escalative? Nowadays, has been uh, broken another taboo tanks. And I'm sure we will reach also.
to uh, fighters will reach also to long range missiles because well this is not anyhow escalative russia already uses all this range of uh, conventional weaponry and uh, so th this will be just uh, by military aid a symmetrical response uh, of support uh, to ukraine estonia has now uh, mm, uh, in combined manner delivered uh, more than one percent of our gdp and this is was in uh, November NATO foreign ministers meeting and I'm continuously repeating it that uh, all NATO member states could upgrade their military support to one percent and it would be a true game changer. So uh, are you having any conversations with your NATO allies about uh, encouraging them to send fighter jets or, or other uh, heavy equipment into Ukraine to help ensure that Ukraine is victorious here? Surely we just uh, we well, made some plans, uh, um, uh, a quartet of uh, Baltic countries, Poland, uh, just uh, two days ago. And uh, we are uh, trying to echo this message that uh, uh, Ukraine needs prevail, uh, that we are not letting, uh, letting anything just uh, to be, in a way, uh, an even situation, the war. Uh, Russia is now uh, planning a large uh, scale counter invasion uh, counter offensive and it means that it needs to be balanced but balanced in a way which makes difference all three baltic states have now expelled russian ambassadors do you think that nato allies need to start kicking the representatives from moscow out of their countries well i think uh, the one thing i've called uh, partners to consider is a principle of parity there are vast amount of Russian diplomats who uh, tend uh, to do uh, things what are not in accordance with Vienna Convention. And I think we have to uh, put into the uh, accordance with the uh, low energy of our relations towards Russia, also of the diplomatic uh, representation. So um, Estonia now executed the parity principle and uh, now it appeared, although a little bit different uh, reasons, that Baltic countries do not have also the um, ambassadorial uh, level representation. Uh, I think the core is indeed to consider a uh, significant uh, diminishing of uh, diplomatic representation of Russia in, in our territories. So, for example, this is going to be seen by a Canadian audience here. Do you think that Canada, Ottawa should perhaps consider, uh, if not move forward on uh, expelling Russian ambassadors, Russian diplomats in this country? Well, uh, well I'm not part, uh, informed about particular amounts of how many Russian diplomats there are in Canada. But if there is uh, more uh, Russian diplomats in Canadian, Canadian soil than vice versa, I would call uh, truly uh, also the Canadian authorities to consider that uh, measure. Minister, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you.